This week on Mountain Bike Chronicles, we head to Val de Sol for the final World Cup of the season. There, Aaron Gwynn hopes to make mountain bike history, and we visit Wade Simmons to talk to him about when he changed mountain bike history at the Merino Gap. Prior to this year, Aaron Gwynn had never won a World Cup. All changed in St. Peter Maritzburg when he beat veterans Greg Minar and G. Atherton at the first World Cup of the season. It was cool to get the first one out of the way at the first race in South Africa. That was the beginning of Gwynn's domination. My goal last year was just to be top five in the overall. Um, so this year, my goal is just to win races. You know, I'm not really thinking about the overall at all. I just want to uh, just win some races and I guess race in a way that you kind of put it all out there and kind of go for it and not try to be conservative because I was kicking myself a lot last year where I crossed the finish line knowing that I had more time up there, but I just kind of was riding a little bit hesitant to make sure I stayed up and got the points and whatever, and I just don't want to do that this year. I kind of want to go for it every race. He's gone on to win four of six races so far this year. An amazing feat, as no rider has ever won five races in a single year. Gwyn hopes to change that at Val de Sol this weekend. We're in Trentino, Northern Italy for the seventh and final UCI downhill race of the season. With these last points deciding the season-long leaderboard shuffle, the pressure is on. Greg's running 220 rotors uh, just so they don't overheat, just because this track is so steep. Organic pads because it's hot out and it's 37 degrees Celsius today. And uh, it's been, been really fun, probably the funnest race yet. The young guys have made 2011 a season to remember, pushing the veterans to new limits. Already with four wins, Gwyn has first place in the bag. He has a chance to join an elite group with a fifth win in a season. But the real estate of the rest of the podium is still in high demand. With roots and rocks at every tight turn, the Val de Sol track is sure to make the season finale interesting. As Gwyn tries to change mountain biking by winning five races in a year, freeride legend Wade Simmons changed mountain biking culture in 2001 when he landed the Moreno Gap in California. That was definitely the turning point for my life, for sure, in mountain biking. Everyone was pushing the, the height, and then uh, you know, it was like, oh, there's this big air, you know, talking to FOSFET and you, like, oh my God, Moreno Valley, it was, it's happening, you know what I mean? I, and I went there, and it was honestly, it was like, oh, it's like, okay, it's not, no problem. It was kind of the natural progression of, of mountain biking for me. And was this your first shoot with New World? It was, I think. Well, uh, I was freshly, I won the Rampage the year before, I think. And this was, I think we shot this in spring. And, uh... Jesus. <laughs> that is awesome, look at that. That was so cool. Yeah, and that's so seven still, years, seven years. That still holds its own today, no yeah. doubt. Well, just walking up the trails today was like some of the stuff. You're like, hmm, that's, I mean, not much has changed when you think about it. Well, Fett, was this it? <laughs> We're lost. We've been like in three drainages now looking for the stuff. I have five years of segments in these drainages, and it's like, it's hard to, it's hard to remember where they all are. That might be that long right there, but that log was broken, so I don't think it's that one. We'll find her. I mean, how many creeks can there be? That was my highlights, man. You don't really. Coming, uh, coming to Nelson and riding that stuff. Uh, working with Riley, because Riley is a fantastic trail builder. He used to, you know, we, we create some perfect stuff. This is the one, old trail. Oh, she's falling apart, eh? Is 
just freaking me out, man. Like, we're going to close to you. It's just sketchy, and if this was a stunt today, I don't think I'd hit that. Like, just look how exposed you are. It was like, oh my god. Come back and see, like, it doesn't it doesn't seem that it was that gnarly. They come here, like, that was pretty gnarly, and you don't remember being scared. Was it? I want to be really remembered as a trail rider. I want to remember as a mountain biker who, who did it for just for fun, you know? Gwyn's biggest loss came at the legendary Fort William track. He had won qualifying the day before and was five seconds up on his race run. And pretty much right near the bottom on one of the easier sections, I just slid out in the corner, trying to push a little bit too hard. And uh, that was that. Pretty much I lost the, I guess, the gap that I had going on everybody else and um, ended up getting fifth. A devastating result. But this fueled the fire within and began his three-race win streak at Leo Gang, Mont St. Anne, and Wyndham. Gwyn has been battling Atherton all year. His run at Val de Sol is up next. It's been a grueling hot week of practice, but the guys aren't ready to let up just yet. Last year's tour winner, G. Atherton, hopes a win here can bump him up to second place overall. Yeah, it's definitely a track I enjoy. You know, I've had good results here in the past, but you, know, you don't put absolutely everything on the line on this track, then you know that all counts for nothing, really. G. Atherton clearly wants to make an impact and show that he's still a force on the hill. He takes the early hot seat. Twenty ten World Juniors winner and current junior leader Troy Brosnan is already a top twenty rider on the Elite Tour and hoping to crack the top ten. Trying to not ride over your head straight away because the track could come out and bite you any second and just got to keep an open mind and keep the season rolling on strong. His run can't top Atherton but puts him in second and seals his second consecutive junior title. As Gwyn prepares for his race run at Val de Sol, he reflects on his most successful season to date. Yeah, man, it's been a uh, it's crazy adventure. It's always those last few weeks kind of grinding down at the end of the season. I think everybody gets a little tired and got some lingering injuries and stuff. You're just ready to get home and chill for a bit. So it's uh, it's been a really fun year. Can't believe uh, how it's moved along. It's definitely a blessing. And uh, man, yeah, it's kind of, when I think about it, it's hard to put it into words because it's just, uh, it's happened quickly. The race day's coming to an end and it's taken no prisoners. Danny Hart steps up. Already in fifth, he's hoping to stay on the podium until the end. Yeah, it's gonna be a hard race because everyone's gunning for it, so hopefully I can hold it together. A good run here could solidify his place on the podium. puts it all on the line and is rewarded with a convincing lead, the biggest of the day. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah well, it was just wild. I was just so nervous at the top, and well, I could see when I was going up, there was fast lads coming down, and I was like, holy shit, there's a lot of, a lot of potential coming down here, and I knew, I knew I had to push it, and I did just that. It got a bit wild in places, just got a good run to go. It was great. But Aaron Gwynn, the story of the year, is not about to let up. He qualified first, and with a split time of almost three seconds faster than Hart, seems to be on a whole different level of riding. He loses some time in the bottom section, but manages to hold on by a second, securing his place in the downhill record books. Gwyn leaves a pack in the dust with today's win, and Menar manages to edge out a second place overall. G takes third place, while Danny Hart bumps ahead of Steve Smith to fourth spot, and young Troy Brosnan's first podium finish gets him moved up to eighth place overall. Next week on Mountain Bike Chronicles, we head to Germany for the Red Bull District Ride, the last FMB World Tour event of the year.